Yo, yo, yo. Happy Sunday, guys. What's up? Good day to you. Good day. Oh, man. We've got uh, video gaming news about to pop off for the 9th of June. Then, then we'll do a little bit of X Defiant. But we got a whole schedule today. Summer Games Fest wasn't that good, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> you're just trying to troll because you're a you're a Jeff Keeley simp, dude. <laughs> Bro. See the host of future future of play? Yeah. I mean, that's this isn't the first year they've done that. Honestly, we were talking about it yesterday. It's it I don't know. It's a little bit weird for me. It's a little bit weird for me for a um a show to have just like a uh an avatar and uh, you know, a virtual avatar um V2 kind of host on there or whatever. It's kind of different. But I don't know, nobody else is doing it, so why not give it a shot, you know? I don't know. <clears throat> it's probably why it just seems weird because nobody else has done that, you know. But it's not the first year they've done it. Yeah. You know, they've done it in previous years too. So they're sticking to it, man. They're sticking to it. But uh yeah, we got a lot today. I know soup's ready. Soup's ready because we're getting the the flick the the black op six, dude. It was a waifu, brother. Good night. You'd live in virtual reality, wouldn't you? If you could, boy. You know, you know. Th th this is who Soup is. Soup's like, you know, if 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 he was in the Matrix, if he was in the Matrix, and he was approached and been like, you know, you can take this pill and stay here, or you can take this pill and actually come to the real world and help us take down the the these you know, bot overlords or whatever, he'd be like, nah, just stay here. Stay here with the waifus, dude. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nah, brother, if, you, if you're going to try and say that, like, Summer Games Fest was b better than any of those other ones? Really? Not really. <clears throat> Not really. I mean, look, I'll pull it up this one. Let's get into video gaming news. Let's get into video gaming news. Um, and we'll talk about all this. We got, we're going to recap everything from yesterday. Um, we're going to recap everything from yesterday. And... Um, you know, then we'll we'll talk about what we got going on for today, which is Xbox. Then their dedicated, uh, you know, Microsoft's dedicated Black Ops Six showcase, um, and then we've got PC gaming uh, show after that today. So we'll do the, the news, then we'll play some X Defiant, then we'll watch showcases for the rest of the day. Okay, what up, Davey? What's going on? So let's go ahead and get into the news, and we'll talk about the showcase stuff. Um, show them how it's done. They've already been showing us how it's how how it how how it's done, how it's done very poorly. <laughs> They've been showing us how it's done, like Dookie. All right. They've been showing us. They've been showing us. So if they're not if they're not taking a step up from where they've been, you know. Come on, man. Come on. <sighs> but this is what I'll say about the showcases we've had so far. I think um, Stoop, you've got to have more of a, an understanding about why we have the showcases unless you're just simply trying to troll. Why we have so showcases for certain reasons, like the uh, Latin American, you know, stuff is going to be filled with more indie type games, but it's about promoting more diversity in the video gaming development side of the industry, right? And so, 
you usually don't go into a showcase like that expecting as much as you would from Summer Games Fest, right? So you have to understand where you, you need to have your expectations for some of these showcases. It's the same thing for uh, something like the accessibility showcase. A lot of people watch the accessibility showcase like I was trying to tell people while we were watching it together. People didn't understand why certain things were happening during the accessibility showcase. Why some of the games looked weird or, or were built in a, a certain manner. And it's like you've got to understand why the showcase is being developed and built around a certain demographic of people that have significant disabilities, right? So there's, there's a reason why a lot of gamers that don't understand that premise are going to look at some of these showcases and go, well, that wasn't very good. Well, they're not necessarily aiming it directly at you. There's a reason behind some of these showcases that's very important. But when you're talking about something like the, you know, what was it? The, uh, the Latin American showcase or whatever, right? You know, you're not going to be showcasing a whole lot of games like Summer Games Fest will, that obviously Summer Games Fest is filled with a bunch of Jeff Keighley's, you know, cohorts that he sold out to in the industry where they're just going to be showcasing like a bunch of AAA games for the most part, right? So you have to understand where that's coming from. And you have to, and I'll be honest with you, Summer Games Fest was not very impressive. It was not very impressive. It just wasn't. And, I mean, if you want uh, an understanding of... Even after we watched it, we were saying that, right? And then you've got stuff like this. Jeff Keighley tweeted afterwards. Jeff, uh, Jeff Keighley tweeted afterwards. And, oh, well, this was with, this was when there weren't very many votes yet. Check this out. Um, this one right here. He tweeted afterwards and was like, How would you grade today's show? A, B, C, or D? This was of over 222,000 votes. So I'm going to tell you, brother, if you thought Summer Games Fest was good, you're in the minority. But it doesn't surprise me either because you are definitely one of those people that you gravitate heavily towards just having some kind of real prominence of, of enjoying what AAA games are over anything else, you know? It feels it feels like that. Anyways, it does. You 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 look at things and go, oh, it's a triple A game. It's going to be a banger. It's an indie game. It's going to suck. That's the impression I get from you a lot. So it doesn't necessarily surprise me that you enjoyed Summer Games Fest more than you know what I mean. Something like some of these other indie showcases, maybe right. Um, but it is going to be a little bit more flashy. It is going to be of a higher production quality, right? Because there's more money put into it because of everybody that's associated with it that's big in the industry, right? So to an extent, it will be a better showcase on that front as well. And But you can't help but understand here that of over 220, and I'm not trying to throw shade at you, dude, but that is the way it comes off. You do tend to gravitate more towards the bigger games in the industry. And, and anytime indies come out, you're like, oh, that's going to suck. It's an indie game. You know what I mean? It feels like you, you're not able to appreciate the smaller devs and, and the uniqueness and effort they put into a game if they don't have the budget to put in like a AAA de developer does. So that's why it doesn't surprise me that you might have liked Summer Games Fest more, right? Because it is centered more around that big production quality type of of uh, side of the industry, correct? So, <clears throat> you look at this at, at over 222,000 votes, right? And 40% of the votes said that this was as low of a grade as they could give it for Summer's game, Summer Games Fest. 27% said a C, 24% said a B, and 9% said it was an A quality showcase. It wasn't very good. It really wasn't. So, it's hard to appreciate it when the games are similar. So I, this is, I understand that. But if you're, you can't sit there and act like, okay, so so this is, I'll, I'll, I'll try and, 
I'm going to, I'm going to give you something to think about here. Okay. So there are a lot more games to experience and to showcase in the industry on the indie front than there ever will. No, I'm not trying to cook you. I'm just trying to give you something to think about here. Than there ever will be on the AAA front. Double the AAA front, let's say that, right? Because what is it? it? It takes, you know what I mean? It takes a lot more resources and time to get those double the AAA quality games produced, right? So it's, and I was talking about this yesterday when we were watching the showcases, I was talking about this. I would not have known about hardly any of these games if it wasn't for the showcases, right? Like, I mean, it, it's incredible how many games that are, there are actually in the industry for us to experience that you probably won't even ever hear about. And a lot of those are indie games, right? Because there are a ton of developers out there that are either individual developers or they are very, very small developers working on very small budgets trying to bring us their vision of something to enjoy, yeah? As opposed to, when you look at it in comparison, as opposed to most of these gigantic companies that sit up there and the, the um, how quickly they're able to produce, or how, I guess the, the opposite of that, how long it takes them pr to produce these big budget AAA games, right? So when you think about it like that, it makes sense that there's going to be more to showcase on the front of like smaller budget indie type titles than there ever will be on the double to triple A front in the industry, right? So when you look at it like that, you're bound to run into more games on the indie side of the industry that have similarities, right? You're just bound to. Because there's so many more of them all the time. Okay? So, I, I think that you have to understand the way the industry works on that front. Um, to get more of an idea of why it is the way it is. But I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I totally understand it. It's like, when we, this is what I expect every single year from like, we watch wholesome games. Like, we watched wholesome games yesterday. And before it even popped off, I was like, get ready for the cozy games. You know what I mean? Because... Wholesome games, cozy games. What do you get a lot in that segment? Farming games, you know? It's that whole, like, farming life sim kind of thing. You get a lot of that, you know what I mean? It just, it's inevitable. It, it is what it is, right? And you're right. On the indie front, you get a lot of repetitiveness. Now, on the flip side, you can't say that we don't get repetitiveness on the big double to triple A front either, you know? Because we do. We do. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's as, you know, thick, I guess. You know, it doesn't seem like we get as much of it because there's not as many games being produced on the same, you know, scale as what we get from the indie or the smaller budget side of the industry. We just get way more games on that front. It's, it, I mean, it, that's the way it is, right? So when we see all these, you know... <clears throat> showcases we tend to get a lot of indie stuff and there's tends to be a lot of repetitiveness in it because there's a lot of these indie companies that make very similar types of games right but we get we get repetitiveness on the double and triple a side of things too man we really do there's a lot of it i think that industry as a whole that's that's what makes good games stand out though when you find those titles that have found a way to stand out and be unique whether it be uh, from the indie side of the court, you know, the, the industry all the way up through AAA, uh, maybe even quadruple A nowadays, right? And everything in between. It's the uniqueness in some of these titles that really makes them stand out. And those are the ones that, that really, you know, end up getting the awards at the end of the year. And that's why you get it on both fronts. You get games that get awards that are indie games. You get games that get awards that are AAA games and everything in between. We've had bangers this year. We've had bangers this year already, right? You want to talk about the games that we've had already this year? You know, you're talking about games like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the AAA front. 
Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 on the AAA front. We've got Helldivers 2 on the AA front. And then we've got things like Manor Lords, right? On the indie front, which is what? A, a city builder strategy kind of game? There's a ton of those. But Manor Lords has some uniqueness to it that's made it stand out, right? And the quality of the, the development and everything too, correct? And then Pal World, right? Pal World is, as much as I know you like to throw shade at it, it took the gaming world by storm this year, right? And it's an indie game. And what's it about? It's about what a lot of those other games on the indie front try to do, which is the concept behind, you know, creatures, creature catching, you know, or, or creature uh, battling or whatever. But they've done it on a unique scale, right? So, no, no, don't try to tell me no, dude. I know better. So I think, you know, you, you anybody that watches these showcases has to understand to an extent the way the industry works and, and why we do get games that look very repetitive, feel very, you know, common, similar, if you will, uh, to an extent, especially on the indie side, right? But <clears throat> we get bangers all the way through the industry. You just have to understand the way, the way it works. So I, I know that, and, and I was even commenting last night that, um, you know, through through the end of the showcases we were watching last night, I was starting to get to a point where I was seeing titles being showcased that I had seen um, already once or twice. Right? So we're getting to a point in the showcase season where we're starting to see repetitiveness even in the showcases. Where they're showcasing the same games we've already seen in other showcases and stuff like that. Right? So, I don't know. I think you've got to be, um, you know understanding of what the showcase is about expectations of of what you should be seeing in each respective showcase and it doesn't mean that you can't be disappointed i was disappointed by by devolver i thought devolver showcase was production wise good but what they showcased was very lackluster you know and devolver is one of my favorites to look forward to every summer i thought devolver you know was you know, kind of a letdown. I thought like, Summer Games Fest, I was expecting way more. I was expecting way more out of it. Obviously, I can't stand Jeff Keighley, you know. Can't stand Jeff Keighley, but I was expecting more out of Summer Games Fest, as most people were, right? And it just, it was kind of lackluster, dude. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know. Uh, one of the things I was talking about yesterday was, what are we dealing with right now? You know, what, what's going on? Because the uh, showcases so far this summer have not been exponentially good. PlayStation's wasn't mind-blowing. Nothing so far has been phenomenal. Compared to some other showcase seasons of past, especially. And is this a result of, you know, I mean, over the past year and a half, we've had bangers, dude. I mean, banger release after banger release in the gaming industry. It's been in insane, you know? It's been insane. So, are, are we dealing with some issues? Uh, and Florida brought up another uh, thing to talk about on this front, which is, you know, are we dealing with maybe some repercussions of layoffs in the industry? And, and it's showing itself through the, uh, the showcases this summer. Is that part of it? I don't know. But it doesn't seem like some showcases, showcase seasons at least, that we've had in the past. That's for sure. Definitely. And we've still got more to come, right? We've got all of Xbox's stuff today. We've got PC Gaming Show today. We've got Ubisoft tomorrow. We've got the uh, Dragon's Age stuff on Tuesday. So we got a lot more to come. But I think people have to understand and be, be really educated on, on what you should be getting out of each one of these showcases respectively instead of just looking at it as oh well you know a lot of these showcases aren't summer games fest production quality they don't have the big triple a developers so you know it it's just gonna be a bunch of the same indie stuff and it's gonna suck you can't i don't think you can look at it like it's not really fair you know so i don't know that's kind of my my feedback so far as far as what I've seen from the showcases 
and what I would implore people to be a little bit more understanding about with um, some of these showcases and why they are important. Accessibility is incredibly important. You know, um, I do think that diversity is important in the industry. Um, culture as a whole, uh, which diversity brings into our games, um, is, is a good thing. It's a good thing to have diversity in the uh, people that are making games because we get more cultural viewpoints from cultures around the world, which is is really just more broadening for people as a whole and for an entertainment you know that we a lot of us enjoy. I think it's good for people to be immersed in something a little bit different than what they're used to. So that's why I think that that kind of stuff is good as well. But I do think you have to understand where your expectations should be for what kind of stuff you're going to see. <clears throat> I was, have I been overly impressed by most stuff? No, but I think every showcase has had their things. Every showcase has had a few things here and there that I've gone. That looks pretty dope. That looks pretty good, you know? And, um, so it hasn't been like a total loss or anything. It just hasn't been of the same magnitude, that we've seen in years past, I think, you know, I think so. You calm down, sir. Um, let's get into this though. But I do think, you know, Summer Games Fest for a lot of people was pretty disappointing, man. It really was. And what I'll do is, um, whenever we finish up the news segment this morning, I'll bring up my Steam and throw in my wish list and uh, show everybody some of the some of the games that I've wish listed off of. Because normally what I do is, while we watch showcases, I'll go through and wish list games that I think look interesting, that I think have potential. And so I'll go through and look at my Steam wish list, and I'll show everybody the games I've seen that I thought were worth a, a look and, and worth putting on my wish list on Steam, and we'll take a look at some of those and everything, okay? Yeah, this is the uh, the sloth stuff. That's good. We talked about that yesterday. Um, we've looked at all of these, man. Or we've talked about all those. <clears throat> Body cam's a, a weird situation right now. This game appears to be fairly good, but their lobby system is broken, dude. State of Play had VR games. I know you love your VR games, brother. I do. I know it. What have you felt so far about the VR side of the uh, showcases, dude? It does seem like there's an amount of people that are turned off by the realism that we're getting out of a game like Body Cam or um, Re Record, stuff like that. Um, The big problem with uh, body cam right now, from what I understand and what I've looked at on Steam, is that the uh, the lobby system is so bro. It's very archaic. So what you've got, you've got a lobby system where people get in there to match up, and everybody has to hit a ready up button before the game will start. There's no countdown timer or anything like that. It's everybody gets into a a, a lobby once a lobby fills up. Everybody also has to hit a ready up button. And apparently what's happening is most people don't hit ready up. Probably because that's not uh, the type of lobby that is used anymore, really. Which is weird. Um, that they're, they've got it implemented in this archaic kind of... I mean, it's fine if, if you need a ready up button to go ahead and, and if everybody's ready, you can start the match early or whatever. But to have it be set up in a way where... The game will never start if everybody doesn't ready up. There's this situation where people are having a really hard time getting into matches right now. So what the developer needs to do here is implement a timed system for lobbies. Once a lobby is full, there's a countdown timer, right? The countdown timer ends and the match starts. 
It's a simple thing that has been done for a very long time in video games, and it will relieve a lot of these issues from the negative reviews they're getting. But it was a very, very poorly designed lobby and, uh, you know, matchman queuing system for them uh, for this game initially, and they need to fix it pretty quick because they've got a lot of hype right now. They need to fix that, man. Video games are dying, and it's so depressing to see. This was better, too. What? What? What do you got? You got a link or something? Oh, here you go. This is for you, dude. Smurfing study reveals complex motivations behind toxic behavior in video games. <laughs> here, brother. This is for you. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> that's why you smurf. What is this? Why are you giving me IGN stuff, dude? You know I don't like IGN. What is this, bro? They don't have it for their own? Are you kidding me? No way. How are they not gonna have this video on their own flipping? Oh, shut up. Really? Yeah, because it was it was showcased on IGN. That's why, huh? Yep. Nope. This is for them. I got it. Get wrecked, nerd. Don't tell me the reel's only on IGN Live, dog. PM Studios, right there. All right. Don't try to lie to me, dude. I'll ban you. IGN sells reviews. It doesn't surprise me that you like them. IGN sells reviews, dude, for games. It's terrible. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, they sell reviews for games. It's disgusting. Here's the problem. This is all. This is all I'm going to say about it. And I'm going to move on. If you've got a news outlet that's willing to do things like sell reviews for money and not give true feedback to the people that are reading their content, that's misinformation. Okay, that's misinformation. So. How can you trust the integrity of anything else they report on if you know they're going to do stuff like that? I can't. Therefore, I don't care about IGN. I don't trust anything they're going to say. I don't trust that they're going to invite guests over and not have some kind of pre-scripted crap that they go over before they even do those kinds of shows, dude. IGN can get wrecked. I've seen too many, too many times in the industry where they'll come out with a 
This game's a 10 out of 10. It's a perfect game. 10 out of 10 review. And then players play the game. They'll play. They'll put out those kinds of reviews before the game's release. And then people buy the game and play the game. And it's like a 5 to 6 out of 10. It's trash. Yeah, you're good, Davey. I don't care. I don't trust them. To me, they don't have integrity, dude. To me, they're willing to spread misinformation, and I'm not going to buy into it. I'm over it. IGN can get wrecked. That's part of the problem. This is part of the problem. It's like even with any kind of news outlet, right? If it's not even like just world news or whatever, we've gotten to a point in the world where like even world news outlets can't be trusted because it's misinformation, but people don't care about the misinformation. They just feed into it. They consume it and then they regurgitate it. It's an issue. It's an issue. So that's why I don't give a crap about IGN. I don't think that you can trust their information, man. But I will watch it. Thank you. If we couldn't, if we couldn't have found it anywhere else, then I would have watched it on uh, on their from their their upload. But I'd prefer to just watch it somewhere else. They always do. They always do. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that well, one of the things that I was glad about was that it wasn't as cringy filled with bullcrap stuff as like the game awards was but summer games fest doesn't tend to usually tend to be anyways um so i don't know exoborn what's exoborn let's look at this exoborn preview Dude, we're jamming. Wait, what the? My bad. <laughs> now you can go back to waiting for, uh, you know, GTA 8, dude. I'm not going to be diving into this. We know a lot of the stuff we're, we're expecting to see at the Microsoft showcase today. And, and uh, we'll get it. We'll get it, man. Yeah, the Dredge DLC, man. Dredge was such a great game. Larian Studios wants gamers to let them cook on their next game, as we should. We'll take a quick peek at all the Wholesome Direct stuff. I'll link it for everybody as well so they can take a look. Wholesome Direct was not bad. Stop it. You're such a hater. You'd be drinking that haterade all the time, dude. Haterade. This song's called Katana Fight, dude. I love it. We'll get the future game show one up as well. Bounty Star takes Armored Core to the Wild West. See, look at this. You're a knob. <laughs> oh, did I read that wrong? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs>
<laughs> What's Munch, dude? Did we see this? Did we see Munch yesterday? Is this a, a game we saw yesterday? We'll have to take a look at this. This is the one you're talking about behind the frame. <clears throat> yeah. Puzzle game, most anticipated puzzle game of 2024. Behind the frame. It has a release date. We'll take a look at that. Pinky's way into the puzzle games and stuff too, man. He'll probably enjoy that. He's probably already aware, but. <laughs> Yo, best console games on iPhone that everyone should play at least once. Mm, like, like. Uh, AC Mirage, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, Soup? Get some AC Mirage. <laughs> Get some AC Mirage for your iPhone, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> That's a little funny, bro. Oh my god. Greek myth survival game at Dawn of Defiance coming in August. Yeah. Happy Bastards. We've seen a lot of that. I'm not going to dive into that. We'll uh, summarize the Latin American game showcase as well from yesterday. We've already talked about the Blumhouse stuff. Looks like we're getting a new State of Decay 3 trailer at the Xbox Showcase later today. You cracked me up, dude. We've already watched this. We saw Just Crow things. We'll probably summarize that in one of these uh, showcases. Bro, this game looked crazy. Um, the uh, Eric's home, stolen dream. The uh, the cutscenes uh, for the characters looked so good, dude. I want to bring this up. Path of Exile Two co-op gameplay. I got to bring it up, dude. I can't not. Yeah, there was a cinematic trailer for Dustborn, but, you know, cinematic trailers and all that. <laughs> Valorant on PS5 won't support gyro aiming, yo. That way, Xbox players aren't going to throw a fit. <laughs> but wait... I thought this wasn't going to be cross-play anyways. So it is cross-play. That's what I'm gathering from this. It's cross-play across console. It's just not cross-play from PC to console or vice versa. Is that what I'm understanding? Huh. They really didn't want to deal with the shenanigans around keyboard and mouse versus uh, controller, did they? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, nah, Pokemon's dead. Pal World. Power World's where it's out. Pokemon's dead. 
what what all uh we're gonna summarize. Uh um 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 We've got wholesome. We've got future game show. <coughs> Sorry guys. Where's the Latin American? Okay. Oh, dude, Squirrel with a Gun got a release date. Shut up. Let's go, dude. I was actually talking about this. I was like, when are we going to get Squirrel with a Gun? Over the past couple of days, I've been asking that. Nice. Wait, what? How? How'd they try to scam it, dude? <laughs> Bro. Oh, jeez, dude. Let's take a look at Numata real quick. <laughs> oh, that's funny, bro. <laughs> oh, man. We talked about the Outer Sloth stuff uh, yesterday, which is really, really cool. Yo, Soup, what are you getting me, dude? Best Father's Day deals for gaming dads. You're always calling me dad, right? <clears throat> so you're getting me a Father's Day gift, correct? <laughs> Bro, you better fry it up first. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll eat some cod. Move over Helldivers 2. Starship Troopers coming to consoles? I don't think so, dude. Yeah. I think too many people uh, like, like Helldivers 2 more than what Starship Troopers is, is, so. And I don't think Starship Troopers is a bad game from what I've heard. But I don't think it's Helldivers 2 either. <laughs> You're your trip, dog. Ugh. The Ambernic RG Cube is a handheld for retro purists. Let's see what this is. I haven't heard about that. We've got Munch up. We're going to look at that. Women led games as well. We need to look at the women led game stuff that we watched yesterday. So we'll summarize that. <coughs> Mullet Magic. Didn't you play this, Soup? Mullet Magic looks dope, dude. It looks really good. All right, we got a lot of stuff here, man. Let's dive into it. Squirrel with a gun, dude. I'm so excited. Squirrel with a gun is going to release on August 29th. Dude, we got to bring the schedule up right now. Ugh. <sighs> All right. So, in an all-new trailer showcasing one of the most bizarre games ever con concocted, we've learned something exciting. It is with great pleasure we can confirm the release of Squirrel with a Gun. <clears throat> Launching on the Epic Game Store and Steam on August 29th, this inane satirical title was revealed ages ago before going silent, but now the release date is locked in, and a fresh trailer has further portrayed the depth of what we can expect as a gun-toting rodent. 
better than it sounds. Dude, this game looks like it's going to be hilarious. Let's watch this real quick. Let's go. Get your random motes in there, peoples. Argu arguably the most bizarre game you'll ever play, but the sandbox shooter and puzzle platformer will be solid. Fun. For a few hours of entertainment from August 29th, the game will be available to purchase on the Epic Game Store and Steam, and later in the year, it'll launch on Xbox Series X and S and PS5. With a range of deadly weapons at your disposal and the opportunity to control a gunslinging squirrel sitting within reach, is there really any other game that should be taking priority on your wish list right now? Not really. <clears throat> Squirrel with a gun, dude. Looks like it's going to be pretty fun. We'll keep track. Numata. Official gameplay trailer. Let's take a look at this. Are you 17 or older, chat? Of course you are. Peggy, 18. Did you notice that rope tied around his neck? No? Never mind. Some of that looked kind of janky, dude. So, um, coming out this summer, apparently, Numata. All right, there we go. Stop it. Just, oh, Jesus Christ, whatever. <laughs> There's that. The Anburnic RG Cube. Is a handheld for retro, retro purists. Also the answer to my DS problems. <clears throat> huh. Gaming primarily happens on widescreens these days, but the Anburnic RG Cube is a handheld hellbent on bringing classic aspect ratios back. Don't get me wrong. Legacy of Square Screen still lives on through the Game Boy inspired devices that target early 90s emulation. However, Anburnic's latest device is one that of the first that mashes controls similar to that of the Steam Deck and Asus ROG Ally together with a one-to-one -one display. Better still, it also makes for a fantastic way to play DS games. <clears throat> It'd be silly if the best gaming handhelds use square screens as a default, sure. Um, but the gaming world at large normally uses wide aspect ratios. I'm someone who still uses a very boxy CRT regularly, so you can imagine my delight when I discovered that RG Cube was a thing. Over on Ann Burnick's YouTube channel, there's a handy demo video that outlines the benefits of a square screen. In a way, it feels like the RG Cube could be the best portable for emulating handhelds specifically, as silly as it sounds, with plenty of devices benefiting from the blocky display. Easy to assume the portable will just cater to non-widescreen content, but the aspect ratio is also perfect for fitting DS and 3DS windows on screen and their native resolution. Let's take a look at this. <laughs>
boop boop doo. That Kirby music though, man. I like the little LD, uh, LED rings they've got around the joysticks. That's pretty cool. What are we watching? This is um, a uh, little retro gaming device kind of thing called the Anburnic. Uh, I've never heard of it before, so I wanted to take a look and see see what it was. I'll read more about it in a second. We're just watching the, uh, obviously the trailer for it. It's cool how to like either full screen or if you're playing like a 3DS game, it'll it'll give you both both the screens like a 3DS would. Looks sus. We'll see. How you doing today, buddy? Life goes on. That's right. I mean, I'll compare it to something uh, in the analog pocket as well in just a moment. Crazy taxi, dude. Oh, brother, is this road rash? No way. Looks pretty cool. Let's get some more info on this thing. Let's take a look. Um... As DS emulators won't let you split the top and bottom screens, leaving limited room for moving things around, the 3DS is a little easier to deal with, but 16 to 9 by 9 displays also come with compromise in terms of space. Pop that off. Um, square screens aside, the rest of the RG Cube is pretty com uh, contemporary. Armed with hall effect joysticks and triggers, you're getting controls on par with some of the best PC controllers out there. Other perks like a six-axis gyroscope sensor and video output via USB-C drive home the premium nature of this portable, dis distancing it from some of the other cheaper Game Boy-style handhelds that roam the same battlefield. Should you buy the cube? If you've been debating buying a Steam Deck or even an Asus ROG Ally just for playing old retro games, the Anburnic RG Cube might cater better to your needs. In this day and age, you don't need the latest APU to run SNES and Sega Genesis Classics. Even $60 handhelds can, can handle PS2 and Dreamcast games. Whacking down $400 plus on a portable PC could be overkill. That said, RG Cube prices will start at $160 US. It's not exactly the cheapest way to get your retro fix. Largely point either players who are interested in emulating DS, 3DS games, or retro purists who are looking to make good use of that square display as there's uh, a remarkable degree of flexibility when using a one-to-one -one screen. 
as you'll be able to play mini arcade romps at native resolution and include fun bezels with four to three systems for an extra nostal nostalgia boost. I wonder, uh, let me see. Set to launch on June 8th. Does it actually play uh, retro cartridges or is it just ROMs and stuff? Let's take a look at this. Hold on. That's not even the same one. Do they not even have a link to it? Let me see if I can pull it up. I'll compare it to another device in just a moment too. I'll show you. And Burnick RG Cube, huh? Let's see this. It's got Android 13, equipped with RGB lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, supports Android. Yeah, that's how I thought, dude. I was seeing some of the Android games on there. And other 30 plus emulators. Supports users to download related formatted games. So it doesn't. Uh, it does, I guess. Look, TF card. Support TF card expansion up to 2 terabytes. Standard version, no game SD card. Standard version plus 128 gig compatible 4,000 plus games. But I think that's just for downloading the games and stuff, potentially. Um, does it actually play the retro cartridges? What up, Ferret? It doesn't sound like it does. But I would, might not might need to look into this a little bit. Now, so I'll, this is 160 bucks. Let me compare this to something for you. So as an emulator kind of handheld device, this doesn't seem too bad, really. But on the other side of things, if you're like at, you know more of a, a retro purist, you know what I mean. Look at this. The uh, analog pocket is really dope. This is about a 220 dollar price tag, so it's a little bit more expensive. But this thing is legit, dude. It's out of stock right now, but these things are very cool. Um, it's a multi-video game system, portable handheld, digital audio workstation with built-in synthesizer and sequencer. Um, out of the box, it is compatible with uh, all original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced game cartridges. It also has some adapters that you can buy to go with it that will allow you to play things like Neo Geo Pocket games, Atari Lynx games, um, and stuff like that. So... You can see that like the different, it'll play like original Game Boy games, then it'll go into, you know, the screen can can kind of convert the games, you know, depending on what style of cartridge you're using. These are the adapters for the other kinds like, uh, you know, the Sega, old Sega handhelds and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty cool, man. It's even got a dock. It's got a dock as well. So the dock has a... Uh, wireless capabilities for attaching controllers to so if you want to uh, you know the dock has all kinds of modern display ports so you can attach it to your tv and you can just play your games on the tv just like a switch you know you can see in the back here right some usb-c ports and stuff like that um it's pretty cool man it's a pretty cool little device so depending on what you want man uh, i think either one of these might be able to fit i'll, I'll link these for you guys take a look at them that's that and the uh, Abernick, you can get all the details here on this. Both fitting different kinds of situations there, I guess. Um, my most anticipated puzzle game of 2024 from Behind the Frame. From the Behind the Frame devs finally has a release date. So due to the nature of this job, I play a little bit of a lot of different video games. But there are even more of that completely pass me by as most people take for example the gorgeous puzzle game from behind the frame which was released several years back completely missed out on it originally but absolutely devoured it earlier this year now that developers follow-up title the star named e eos is easily one of my most anticipated games it finally has a release date 
This was in the Wholesome Direct. Star named EOS from developer Silver Lining Studio is now set to release on July 23rd. Let's take a look. That nice little D2 emote in there, dude. How did everything go last night, brother? You see. Did was was raid successful shines. or are we still uh everything. still crunching, dude? When you gaze at the stars, the stars also gaze at you. They do not fade away just because you close your eyes. July twenty-third. Nice. Uh, if you're not already familiar, developer Silver Lining Studio and publisher Playism described the game as a story-rich puzzle adventure built around photography. Behind the frame, by comparison, was similar but had to do with painting. The star named Eos is similar to Behind the Frame in that the player will be reacting to old photos left to the young photographer die, uh, or Day by his mother who is absent. What exactly that means remains to be seen, but I've preemptively begun to harden my heart. Releasing on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, and PC on July 23rd. There's another one. Greek myth survival game Dawn of Defiance is coming on August 15th. Mythology and survival crafting collide in Dawn of Defiance launching into PC early access on August 15th. Independent video game studio Traga Entertainment was thrilled to announce during IGN Live yesterday that Dawn of Defiance, the open world survival crafting game inspired by ancient Greek mythology, launches into early access August 15th on Steam and the Epic Game Store. The news co uh, coincided with an all-new trailer highlighting the game's incredibly customizable base building systems as well as the reveal of a threatening new late game enemy type, the Gorgons. Let's go. Hungry. You are the Defier, subjected to a mythical plot across the ruined isles. Ascend from weak soldier to godlike anti-hero as you survive the crossroads, build impressive Greek structures, and prove yourself a champion of defiance. Gather resources, craft and upgrade your gear, and face down the trials of the gods with up to three friends. Available to wishlist now on Steam and the Epic Game Store. Okay. 
Interesting. Can you actually wish list stuff on Epic, dude? Is that a thing? By the way, don't forget about Marvel's Midnight Suns. Uh, that is free right now, man. So if you're interested, don't forget to grab it. Hope shines even in dark times in the reveal trailer. Eric's home. Dude, I was really impressed yesterday when we saw this during the showcases. This game has some very, very good looking um, assets and character models and stuff in their uh, little like cinematics and everything. It is really looking good. So, single-player narrative-focused stealth adventure game from the talents behind Battlefield, Little Nightmares, Mirror's Edge, and Unravel announced at the Future Game Show Summer Showcase yesterday. So, um, international platformer platform games publisher Nord Current Labs announced Eric's Home, The Stolen Dream. The newly revealed title is a narrative-focused stealth strategy adventure game from River End Games, a Gothenburg-based studio comprised of 15 veteran AAA developers whose industry credits include Battlefield, Little Nightmares, Mirror's Edge, and Unraveled. It is going to be on Windows, PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S next year. Take a look. I know that you're worried about the war on the continent. But you are my people, and you will come to no harm. There's no one in any trouble. We just want to talk to him. You told me you wanted out, you and your brother. You said you're done with this, it's too dangerous, not what you wanted. Find her, she's here somewhere. I respected your decision because I thought you respected me and my business and everything I've done for you. This isn't about me. Oh, it's always about you, Hannah, and now you've brought the police here. They're looking for Herman. Doesn't that look great? Jesus, like their eyes are so good. Look, I've no idea what he's done and I don't care. I've just got to find him before they do. It's only a matter of time. You've set things in motion you don't understand, Hannah. What's up, brother? Happy Sunday, man. I should turn that down a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, obviously Eric's home. This is a game coming out next year. It's a uh, stealth based story rich kind of game and the cutscenes look phenomenal the characters like assets and stuff um when does the xbox showcase begin um it is i'll tell you exactly i think it's at 11 o'clock this morning but let me tell you for sure here it will be at noon 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 o'clock noon o'clock for me so we've got roughly for a little over four hours from now, a little over four hours from now. So about four hours and 20 minutes, something like that. So then uh, that's when all the showcases begin for today. We've got Xbox directly after that will be Black Ops 6 and then PC Gaming Show after that. Okay. Tomorrow we'll end the stream with Ubisoft Forward and then we got Dragon Age the Velgard on Tuesday. All right. So we still got a good amount of showcases coming up. If you guys need this list here. But Eric's Home, The Stolen Dream is a character-driven single-player game set in the titular Eric's Home, a fictitious city in a fictitious world, greatly influenced by a Nordic-inspired early 1900s aesthetic. It tells the tale of three protagonists united by fire in their hearts to defy their oppressors. The reveal trailer introduces protagonist Hannah, an adolescent orphan, on a quest to find her brother Herman. Who follows? Uh, what follows is a sequence of events that transforms Hannah into a reluctant hero, inspiring her and her friends to rise from the gutters of Eric's home to become symbols of change. Despite its team's modest size, they've blown us away at every turn. We are proud to support such incredible talent and have Eric's home, the stolen dream, be a part of Nord Labs, Nord Current Labs' continued expansion into the PC and console markets. This game looks good so far. 
From the top down 3D perspective, players will embody Eric's home, the Stolen Dreams, three playable protagonists, and navigate through the densely detailed streets and dreary underground of the city of Eric's home, utilizing each character's unique skills, tools, and weapons to overcome obstacles and solve puzzles. Players can freely move the in-game camera to survey the environment, plan their next step, and execute it with perfect timing. Even an overheard dialogue, such as context-sensitive guard chatter, could prove meaningful in finding the best strategic move to progress undetected, as challenges may have multiple solutions. Love that. Um... Eric's Home cleverly marries the art of storytelling, stealth, and strategy-based gameplay mechanics to treat players to a riveting adventure with high production value visuals, motion-captured performances, and engaging real-time gameplay. This is the premier title from developer River End Games, which was acquired by Nord Current in uh, last year. Will be released next year on Windows, PC, uh, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. I think I already wishlist this. Let me pull it up. And I'll give you guys the link as well. That's not it, dude. What? Give it to me. There we go. No, I didn't yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, add that in, and I'll link it to you guys if you want to take a look, okay? Honestly, just interested in Xbox PC gaming. A bit curious about Dragon Age. Uh, am invested in the series. Just really think Inquisition was a step down in quality. A lot of people, I think, felt that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really all that... I mean, here's the thing. Um, I think when you talk about, honestly, just interested in Xbox PC gaming... I'm that way too, but I mean, that's Xbox. If, if anything comes out really on console, it comes out on PC as well. It's not, you know, they don't really do a whole lot of the whole, it's because they are Windows, right? So there's not a whole lot of, it's not as PlayStation-esque, I guess, you know what I mean? Where they're like, oh, we're going to come out with a game, but it won't hit PC until two to three years later or whatever. It's not as prevalent as that. Because Microsoft almost always, almost, will hit any game that hits Xbox is going to hit, you know, if it's proprietary first party for them, it'll hit PC at the same time. So, you know, that's, you know, I, I think just about anything you see in their, their showcases, you can bet on that, right? So... Um, and we'll see what's up with the new Dragon Age on Tuesday. We'll we'll watch it here in the channel and everything too. I, I we already know there's a lot to be expected, uh, or we already know what is to be expected in large part from Xbox today. But we'll see what all they bring to the table. I would love to hear that. You know, w the thing that I would love to see and hear them address that they won't is the Tango situation because it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense at all. And, um, you know, that's one of those things that is really tough for me to swallow. And um, the only thing they want to say about it is, well, it's just part of our initiative to, you know, change some of the things. We needed to do it because it was something that made sense for us as a business. It's like, brother, that doesn't make any sense at all. They were like a great subsidiary for you and you just crushed them what why they were doing great stuff man you know they just got some default bullcrap excuse for doing stuff like that and it doesn't make any sense to anybody you don't get any kind of real clarity or you know honest explanation about those kinds of situations from these kinds of companies and i would love to hear them address it in a true Something that, that you could actually relate to and, and understand why they might have gone through with that, you know. But you you know we won't get that. You just know we won't. Path of Exile 2, baby. Let's go. Co-op gameplay demo. Check out a live cooperative gameplay demo of Path of Exile 2 with Trevor Gammon, the console game director from Gr Grinding Gear Games and our very own Kurt Indovina. We chat through the gameplay mechanics and upcoming beta coming up later this year. 
Uh, this is probably gonna be long. Yeah, it's 23 minutes, so I'm not gonna watch this. But look, man, I am stoked about some Path of Exile too. For reals, dude. I know we've got people in the community that are excited about Path of Exile 2. We're going to play some of it together for sure. I will be playing Exile, Path of Exile 2. And I uh, I know that we have other community members that are interested in playing as well. And so, um, you know, I wasn't sure exactly what this was going to be, how long of a video this is going to be. But we're not going to watch 23 minutes right now. So, if anybody's interested in some more Path of Exile 2 content, then you can watch some of it right there at that link, okay? Larian Studios wants gamers to let them cook on their next game or games. The Baldur's Gate 3 developers seem confident people will like whatever it is they're working on. They're a great developer. I would probably, you know, I'm, I'm quite sure that will be the case. Given Baldur's Gate 3's success following its full release in the back half of 2023, came as a surprise to many when Larian confirmed they would not be working on a DLC or a sequel for the Dungeons & Dragons property, instead shifting their focus to two other projects they now have in development. In the time that has passed since co-founder and CEO Sven Vink confirmed that Larian is moving on from D&D as a whole, and I cannot blame them because I don't think a whole lot of people really want to be in bed with... Uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. They seem like a pretty terrible uh, organ organizations. I'll be honest with you. It becomes apparent due to various comments from members of the team that the decision is rooted in Larian's desire to work on projects that ignite their passion and excite them. Hence their decision to move on to other worlds. Whatever IPs are getting the Larian Studios treatment now already has the confidence of many who can't wait to see what the developers are working on, and those developers are confident they're crafting something excellent again. In a new interview with The Gamer, Director of Animation Greg Lidstone and Cinematic Animations Producer Leah Caldwell shared their excitement and confidence. When asked what they would say to those feeling a bit trepida uh, trepidation at what Larian could be working on if not for Baldur's Gate 4, Caldwell had a fitting response. Apart from the Let Us Cook line, I've had a few conversations with people about this after Sven uh, did the GDC talk. A lot of people are understanding of us wanting to do that and having more flexibility and allowing us to continue on with our kind of own universes. Caldwell then continues, I think people will really love what we're kicking up and the stories that we're going to tell. Um, Lidstone agreed with the sentiments following it up with a response of his own, give us some time. These things don't happen overnight. We're moving as fast as we can. Even if we're not doing another Boulder's Gate, we're doing something that I'm really excited about that I can't tell my wife about, he responds. I really do enjoy coming to work because there's so many cool ideas I'm seeing in the concept art channels as people are working up ideas. It's just super exciting. As for what Larian is working on, it's all entirely speculation as to what the two projects could be outside of the fact that they're definitely not D&D &D related. Larian is also working on another massive patch for Baldur's Gate 3, which is due later this year that will add modding tools and additional evil endings. Ooh. And the studio continues to promise crossplay compatibility and photo mode are coming. <laughs> all right. Um, you just weren't thrilled with like, uh, what the writing in BG three or something. Is that what it is? Bounty Star takes Armored Core to the Wild West. Uh, yeah, this game looks cool. We've seen some stuff about it before, but uh, more than any other subgenre in gaming, the mecha game has a very defined look. Titles like Armored Core and Mech Warrior both tend to share a lot of aesthetic similarities, doing out, doling out, excuse me, rusty mechs in a hard, uh, hardened sci-fi world. The art style may change a, change a here and there, <laughs> but the genre certainly has a uniform, so to speak. That's about to change things to an unlikely indie. Bounty Star is an upcoming title from publisher Annapurna Interactive that's unlike any mecha game I've ever seen. In fact, I didn't realize it was one at all until I went hands-on with it at Summer Games Fest. While it might not wind up, wind up being the tightest or most complex mecha game, its unique Wild West tone gives the genre 
the aesthetic shakeup it needs. In Bounty Star, players take on the role of Clem, a bounty hunter living out in the deserts of the American Southwest. She's hidden away in a modest roadside scrapyard where she spends her day cooking meals out of the local cacti and tending to her giant mech. Before actually jumping into that robot though, I get a small taste of Bounty Star's other side, its base management. My first mission simply had me gathering some materials and cooking a nice meal, which will grant my mech some buffs on its next trip out. I'm not sure how deep that piece of game goes, but the full release promises farming, ammo crafting, and animal raising. The meat of the experience, though, is its third-person mecha action. After tending to my settlement, I head over to, my, to a board in my base, pick up a bounty, hop into the cockpit of my machine, and customize all my weapons and gear to build a loadout for the mission. After that, I'm dropped in a bite-sized mission where I need to track down a target in a small map out in the desert. It structurally brings me back to Armored Core, with its small objectives that can be completed in a few minutes. A few handy tutorials teach, uh, teach me the basics of battle, Aim and fire my gun at enemies, slash them with my melee weapon, or spray out a spinning hell of bullets by pressing fire in the middle of my melee attack string. Those actions will heat up my robot though, and there's a consequence for that. If my machine overheats, it'll temporarily become immobilized and leave it open to attacks from foes. Hard to get a sense of just how deep Bounty Star's mecha action really is from the short snippet I played. Battles seem a bit simplistic, as I had limited tools I could use. I was either shooting or performing the same slash combo depending on my enemy's resistances to those damage types. I'm hoping that it's just a matter of an early game build and that later gear will make a bigger difference to playstyle. Even if combat does land on the shallow side, I'm happy to see a mecha game with such a unique tone. Bounty Star goes full on western, replacing cowboys and robbers with giant robots. That makes way for some more human storytelling built around Clem, a tortured war veteran, as opposed to the he he heatier, hard sci-fi of something uh, like Armored Core. Headier. The genre could stand to think outside the cockpit a bit more as Bounty Star is doing here. Cool, man. Yeah, we've seen some stuff about this before and it looks really good. It's going to launch this year on PS4, PS5, Xbox One Series, X and S, and PC. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, Bounty Star. What do we have? Gameplay walkthrough. We'll take a look at this real quick. How long is this? Two minutes? Let's go. I'm Ben Ruiz. I don't really have an issue with Larian's writing. I think their writing is pretty, Bounty pretty good. But, you know, Bounty everybody has their... ...about a broken but powerful ex-soldier, now a bounty hunter, in a post-apocalyptic... -post that kind of American stuff can death. be subjective. Her name is Clem, and she's trying to start a new life in a place far from home, traumatized from a profound mistake she made at the end of her military career. One half of the gameplay experience is a third-person action game shooting mechanics, in which Clem is bringing in her marks, dead or alive, in her customizable infantry mech. Throughout the experience, the players will obtain all kinds of exciting mech weaponry and utilities and use them against increasingly bigger and badder foes. In the other half of the gameplay experience, the protagonist cleans up her life and develops her bounty hunting operation in the safety of her newly acquired home on the edge I'll of the I'll link the game for you guys after the trailer's over. pre-apocalypse gas station and tune-up shop with a lot of potential. The player will learn how to be an effective bounty hunter in this scarce and dangerous world in which self-sustaining ways of life are absolutely vital. She will grow and obtain food and use it to cook meals that enhance her focus in different ways. She will obtain scraps and crafting materials and use them to build devices that enhance both her personal and combat endeavors. She will befriend and be visited by all manner of characters, all of whom are playing an important role in her current phase of life. Bounty Star is ultimately about a human pushing out inner demons, rebuilding herself and her personal environment, and relearning what it's like to be a force for good in a place that very badly needs it. As a gameplay experience, it is all about engaging, fun, modern action mechanics that many types of players will be able to enjoy, but not without being challenged. Thanks so much for watching. Bounty Star is coming in early 2024. Looks pretty cool. Here you go. There's the link to the game on Steam if you want it. Oh, we're going to watch this. Uh, Munch. 
Reverse Horror PC Game Munch shows off its combat evolution systems for transforming into the ultimate heavy metal monster. Let's look this up. It didn't get embedded there, so... I'll replace it with this. Uh, there we go. This is what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. No flipping way. Kill, eat, evolve, dude. That actually looks pretty dope. I like that. Much. It's not on. Oh, I put much. Yeah, there needs to be an N in there. There it is. Munch! Quarter four of this year. We'll wish list that. If you guys want to wish list it yourselves, there's the uh, link on the Steam page. That's cool, man. Nice. Exoborn preview. Stormfield shooting. While the world of FPS is chock full of great examples, the extraction shooter is still fairly new. There are several experiments out there. If you aren't escaped from Tarkov or Gray Zone Warfare, people don't really know you. That uh, means there is space for genre to grow. And uh, let me say something. I think the genre, you know, there are a lot of people that have been playing Escape from Tarkov for a long time that really like the extraction vibes. They need something else to go to. The, uh, the developer behind Escape from Tarkov has really done their, their fans and player base a disservice uh, over about the past year to year and a half. And, and as of more recent, especially with implementing like pay to win stuff, um, ultra expensive versions of the game where there's content in paywalls and stuff. It's it's really gross. And I would like to see, we got like Gray Zone Warfare out, which is early access. They've had, you know, a, kind of a mediocre initial reception, but it is early access. We've got um, the Delta Force Hawk Ops game coming, which is going to be free to play. But we're getting more info out of that right now. We've been watching that for a little bit. It's going to be free to play. It's going to have extraction in it. Marathon's coming, which is supposed to be an extraction shooter from Bungie. Um, we're having more on that front come to us. And and um, I think that the Escape from Tarkov community needs something different. It feels bad that developers done that to them. After watching a preview for the game, I'm intrigued in what the developer Shark Mob AB has to offer. The map we were shown takes place in Colton County, in a south southern area of the U.S. that has been decimated by apocalyptic storms. There's a huge sinkhole in the middle of it, showing just how ripped to shreds the area is. This isn't the only map. The smaller and higher engagement maps will be part of Exoborn. I like an, the idea as Battle Royales such as Call of Duty Warzone have them. They tend to add a lot to the experience. Let's take a look at this. Why have I heard this name before? I've heard the name of this game before. Where are you at? Did you get it? Yeah. Maybe it's just because of Exo Prime last year. Working on it.
What's up, Dave? How'd the gameplay go? So, sick, they showed us nothing. Awesome. Don't you love that? Show us a whole bunch of... Thank you. Show us a whole bunch of cinematics and nothing about what the game actually is going to be. Love it. Let me see something. Um, all they have is the announcement trailer on here, so I don't really know what to tell you guys. Um, Playtest incoming. You can sign up now on their Steam page. So, uh, if you think it might be worth checking out, then uh, you can try to get in on the playtests. Okay, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I. I just don't understand. They got playtests coming up. They put out an announcement trailer that literally is just a cinematic. I mean, come on, man. Be better, dude. That always makes me feel like a, a developer doesn't trust their game enough to just at least show something. At least so, show something of gameplay, you know? If you're not willing to show gameplay at all, it just tells me that you don't trust your product, man. I don't know. I just I don't know how anybody can trust something that they don't show. It's, it's marketing... I, this is the way it's been for a long time. This is the thing I've talked about this a lot lately. It's been like this for a long time, and people have been duped for a long time on this, right? So um, the difference being that's fine if you want to have a cinematic or whatever, right? I, I agree with you. It, it's marketing. It's marketing that's duped people in uh, consumers in this industry for a very long time. But I think people are getting smarter nowadays about it. And that's why I talk about it a lot is because um, most of us that have seen through this for quite some time now, it's uh, it doesn't make any sense. Because if you're not getting at least some sense of what the game truly is, what the gameplay truly looks like, they're showing you nothing, right? So you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Overused, people are getting wise to it. I agree. It has worked for a very long time, it has. But I do think people are getting wise to it. Yeah. And um, that's why I talk about this. All, every time I see a trailer like this, it was. it's just like, why? You're showing me. It's the same thing I've been telling everybody about Fable 4. We'll probably see some gameplay of Fable 4 today. But last year, we got Fable 4 trailer, and people were, like, hyped up about it. I'm like, it was all cinematic, dude. What are you talking about? Why are you getting jacked about some trailer for a game being made by a developer that's never done anything besides car games? And all they did was give you a cinematic trailer. Other than the fact that it's Fable, it says Fable on it. You know what I mean? That's the thing that, like, I totally agree with you. It's a marketing ploy and tactic in this industry that's been used for a long time and it's baited people for a long time on the hype machine. You're absolutely right, dude. <laughs> but, I don't know. I'll link it for you guys if you want to take a look. It just seems so stupid, man. Let's take a look at this. Yo, Soup, thank you for this, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, we got some... Uh, PM Studios games. Let's take a look at what they got for us. Ah. Here 
little bit loud, sorry. I don't know why this just made me think of it, but dude, I can't wait for the new Despicable Me movie. The Despicable Me movies are so good. And IMO. I think they're great. It's the, is that what it is? This music, I think, huh? All right, let's see what else they got coming. What's up, Florida? How you doing? Oh, you are you tra you're traveling today, yeah? What the crap? Donk, nice. Table flip, huh? That looked kind of wild. Let's school. Just build Hogwarts Legacy, dude. Exophobia. Cricket. My time at Sandrock Online. A little bit too hot and heavy, you know? Witch Spring R. Dread Out 2. Zoe Begone. Extremely powerful capybaras. That's the name of this game. Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Ultimate. Yeah, Florida. Phantom Deuce. Getting that first class treatment though, you know what I'm saying? Nice. Florida hanging out on the plane this morning. Just comfort plus. Don't lie to me. I know you got like a mimosa and a flipping, a hot steam towel, and, you know, like a foot rest up there. Probably, they probably got little dogs they hand out just for comfort, you know? Like, oh, hey, would you like a dog or a cat just to keep you company and keep you warm and nice and cozy? You know? <laughs> we, got, we got a variety. <laughs> The leg room is nice. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> traveling on a G6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spend all my money on an airline for buying a puppy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, dude. I do hope the travels go well today, though. Be safe. Be safe. Thanks for that suit. Appreciate it, buddy. Future game show. So we're gonna we're gonna uh let's see here. Yeah, we're gonna go over the future game show, the wholesome direct, Latin American games, and the women led games real quick. We're just gonna summarize these fairly quickly. Look, um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over a whole lot of them because um what we did was we watched all these yesterday, right? So trying to go through back through all these showcases and summarize all of them bit by bit is very time consuming, right? And we've just got a little bit of time today to play games together before we have to watch or don't have to, but before we are going to watch showcases for the rest of the, the day, right? So around lunchtime. So what I'm going to do is just like kind of show you they've, they've got like a lot of trailers in here for games they're, they're announcing and, and showcasing in these different showcases. So future game show had a uh, Bogdan's Cross reveal trailer. Excuse me, uh, first dwarf gameplay. Once human, um, yeah. We, we, I've played the beta twice on this now. I'm not nearly as thrilled after seeing where they went with the second beta after the first one, but we'll see. Um, diabolical, diabolical rogue. They've got Star Vaders, the Precinct. Uh, Warhammer 40,000, Space Marine 2, Goat Simulator 3, Multiverse of Nonsense, Dustborn, um, Numata, which we already looked at this morning, Starship Troopers Extermination, and uh, the casting of Frank Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is put all of these in here for you guys. Uh, I'll link this so you can take a look at all these. Well, after after we, I like kind of quickly summarize these showcases from yesterday i'm going to bring up my my steam account i'll go to my wish list and show you guys everything that i wish listed personally from like the past two days of showcasing basically to give you a look at the things that i saw personally that were a bit more interesting and i'm i'm more interested in following now that doesn't mean that you guys will feel the same way uh which is why i want to give you the links to take a look at everything that's been showcased yesterday so you can make your own decisions, but I'll do that as well, okay? So here's the future game show stuff. There will be a bunch of videos in there. There's that. Um, the Wholesome Direct Showcase. Take a quick peek here. Wholesome Direct Showcase more than 70 indie games, guys. Um, so it, it's going to be extensive. You can rehash it right here. they got the entire showcase. The uh, Direct Presentation, the Wholesome Direct Presentation. Uh, showcased 70 games. Full show can be replayed right here above, like I said. Um, focusing on games that have a positive vibe. You get a lot of... So for Wholesome Direct, you get a lot of cozy games, right? Which is like a lot of farming sim, um, life sim kind of games, stuff like that, right? And uh, it's cool, man. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There really is. So uh, they don't really list anything out in here, but you can definitely go back and take a look. And you'll probably see a few of the games listed on my wish list, okay? But here's your link to a recap of the, uh, or to be able to watch the Wholesome Direct Showcase again if you missed it yesterday with us. Latin American games also featured over 70 games yesterday. We watched this as well. Uh, Latin American Game Showcase Summer Game Fest Edition took place yesterday and featured over 70 games in development from across Latin America. Right, Latin American Game Showcase Steam Cell is now live until June 15th. Uh, I'll pull that up as well when I pull Steam up. Over 150 games developed by people from across Latin America are currently discounted. You can watch the entire showcase here. There was some cool stuff in it, all right? Um, and it's a great to make sure we're promoting more diversity in this world of entertainment that we like, you know? From back in the day when it, get, it used to be very stereotypical all the time of you know, like characters and stuff like that into always trying to promote more diversity because I think that understanding and accepting the fact that us as people are different and uh, getting more diverse range of cultures and people from those cult cultural backgrounds 
into developing games, it, it allows people to understand the co cultural differences, be immersed in culture to a greater extent, which I think is great, dude. It's, a, it's always a good thing to, um, you know, have an understanding of, of people's culture and, and uh, other people's culture, even, you know, besides your own. And, and uh, it's good. It's good. It brings people together. It has, it helps people to have more of an understanding of, of who people are and why they, they are who they are. You know, I think it's a great thing. So here's the Latin American stuff. Women-led games as well. This was good yesterday. Uh, showcased over 20 games also. There's also a women-led game Steam sale going on currently until June 15th. Just like the Latin American stuff, right? And uh, you can recap the entire thing at this embedded video. There's an official website also for women-led games that you can go check out. See the complete least list of the featured games. So I'll pull that up real quick. So I'll link this one first. This uh, you can watch the entire women-led game showcase. There's that. Then their website also. There you can watch it here as well. I kind of figured you would, but uh, they also like will show uh, a lot of their partners, the the interviews, games, stuff like that, that they are promoting, okay? So there's the women-led games website as well, okay? Now, um, I'll go ahead and bring up the store page right now. So if you go to Steam, and this will, this will basically, this has been going on since they started the summer showcases, but uh, for any of them that you've missed, or even for any of them that are coming up, if you click on their sh summer showcase stuff, you can see like right now they've got up next, uh, they've got the Xbox showcase right happening at noon o'clock, noon o'clock for us, that's a thing, and um, that'll go all the way up until the PC gaming show. So basically, it's an Xbox game showcase followed by the uh, Black Ops Six showcase, right? And uh, so from like lunchtime all the way through the end of the stream today, we'll be watching Xbox, Microsoft Xbox Showcase, Black Ops Showcase, Black Ops 6 Showcase, and then we will watch PC Gamer uh, Showcase as well, okay? But if you go look down here, you can look at all the spotlight events, right? Like there's women-led games, okay? And uh, up here you'll see like Dill's demos coming soon. The homepage where you can rewatch again. They'll have it embedded here for everybody. You can scroll down, showcased games, and you can go through here and look at all the showcased games. If they're coming soon, it says it. If they're already out, a lot of them you'll find some of them on sale, like Star stuff, things like that, right? So uh, the games on sale. They've got so all of these showcases have this, right? So women-led games. I'll show you the um, Latin American showcase as well. So you can see the 2024 official selection, the games inspired by Latin America, games with demos, discounted games. So just, you know, even I think e even if you're not a PC gamer, Steam is a great place right now that it gives a very comprehensive, all-encompassing location for people to come to. And... Uh, just look at whatever showcase you were trying to recap yourself on. Uh, you just click there. You go find the showcase you wanted to look at. You can get either watching the showcase again. You can look at a lot of the games that were announced. Uh, games that are already out have discounts. Uh, all kinds of stuff, man. So this is a great, great source and location. And I'll link this for you to be able to come and just uh educate yourself on a lot of what's going down with a lot of these showcases that either have happened or or are going to be happening okay so there's that now i'll bring up my wish list as well and just show you some uh date added let's go so we talked about munch this morning eric's home slay the princess i don't know how i didn't have this on my wish list already if you guys haven't seen slay the princess this is a wild wild little game so uh, this is being promoted again because there's new content coming to it. But let me show you Slay the Princess real quick. This game is already out, by the way. It's overwhelmingly positive, over 10,000 reviews. It's a horror visual novel, psychological horror, um, where 
it had a lot of controversy when it first came out, okay? And uh, it probably still does, but the uh, cinematic release date trailer, I'll show you what this game's we're about. We're supposed to save her. You're supposed to slay her, or she'll go on to destroy everything. Do you not understand what everything means? You poor thing. We both know this isn't you. See? She's not a monster. She prized the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. I'll try to make it quick. What is she? She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew, but failing to hit anything vital. Oh no! I'll try again. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! You collapse to the floor, blood pooling in the cavity she carved into <laughs> your torso. She leans over you, tears leaving pink streaks down her cheeks. <laughs> I wish it didn't have to end like this. And it's too late. We to need to play this game in like differently. September Everything or, or Scaretober. It's not really horror horror, but it could work. It could totally work. I see you have returned to me. Days mean nothing in the Maw of Forever. The range, brother. It's wild. Yeah, it's wild, dude. Uh, so that's slay the princess. Look who else wants this game. <laughs> Pinky dude. It got a ninety on Metacritic, by the way, and it's again overwhelmingly positive on Steam. So take a look at that. Um, there's a uh, Rekka. Which is a, a, a wild looking little game. I don't, uh, this is the one where you've got a house with legs and everything. If you guys haven't seen this, this looks pretty wild. Um, it's a uh, single player explorer, exploration building type of game. It's crazy that you're building this house on top of these, these like, it's got like almost like a, a uh, Baba Yaga meets like, Howl's Moving Castle kind of vibe to it. It looks kind of wild. Um, Mandragora. This looks really good. Metroidvania. If you're a fan of Metroidvanias, check this out. This might be a solid play right here. This looks really good so far. So uh, I'll link this. Mandragora. Looking cool, man. I love my Metroidvania, so, you know. Hell of an office! Yo, if you like parkour like our buddy Pinky likes parkour, they've got like some ex extra stuff coming to this game. And uh, it's early access right now. But this is like one of those... Uh, 3D platforming, first person, uh, action runner, platformer kind of games. And uh, it's all time based and everything. So uh, if, if you like those kinds of games, look at Hell of an Office. Um, <clears throat> Dream Core, this is like a psychological horror game that looks really wild, man. Check this out.
I love it. <laughs> the kids just like, oh no, the parents came with some ice. While waiting, it looks it looks pretty fun. It's interesting. Um, here you go. There's that. No, knock it off, man. Screenbound, really interesting game. Um, and a lot of these indie showcases coming out is Screenbound. This game looks really cool, man. Um, check this out. Yeah, sounds good, Florida. Yo, be safe, okay? Yeah, this one does look really cool. Do you see when you get hit, the battery on your uh, handheld goes down? It's pretty interesting. Green bound. Very nice. Very nice. I'll link this. This is screen bound. Karen looks really cool too. Um, another indie game. And uh, it looks beautiful and hard and interesting game mechanics. I think uh, one of the things I noted was I think that if you watch the extremities on the character, I think you'll see some shake in there. And I think that might be an exhaustion mechanic for your character. I'm not sure of that, but if it is, that's really neat. game is beautiful. See the extremities shaking as they're about to fall. I think I think it's an exhaustion mechanic, but I'm not positive. We'll find out. Game's gorgeous. It's really good. We've already seen this one in a few different showcases, just like the uh, previous game I was talking about. Um, so I think there's there there's some hype building up around these games right now. Screenbound and Karen both Slitterhead. Ooh, we got new Slitterhead content, guys, which is really cool. Slitterhead is a horror game. Um, and we'd seen something about this probably about a year to a year and a half ago, but I think this is the first time we've gotten new video gameplay and stuff of Slitterhead. This looks really nice. 
weird. Looks really weird. <laughs> Which I like. Just jump that person out of the window. They're just dead over there on the ground. Could you imagine? Dude, a praying mantis the size of, of us, even half the size of us, would be absolutely terrifying. looks crazy dude november 8th november 8th i'm gonna put that on the schedule real quick there we go solid um i'll give you the link to this as well if you're interested, very nice, very nice. Slitterhead, uh, cuff bust, looking wild. Um, th this is from the same developer of Choo Choo Charles, funny enough, and uh, this looks like a wild little multiplayer game for us, potentially. I <laughs> just knock him over with a bar of soap, make him slip, and then just beat the crap out of him with a spoon. I <laughs> was jumping on that dude's head. Their eyes are all red, dudes. Smoking splits. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. This looks like a fun time for multiplayer, dude. Here. Cuff bust. Uh, Kanutsugami Path of the Goddess. We've seen a lot of this already in the past, so I'm not going to uh, watch the trailer right now. 
But uh, the release date is July 18th. It's already on. You can pre-order it. Killer Bean, we've watched a number of times already as well. It looks very funny. It looks very fun. It's slapstick, dude. Um, it's just way over the top. It, it looks crazy. It looks like it's going to be a fun time, too. Delta Force Hawk Ops. This is one of those games I was talking about earlier where um, this is going to be a free-to-play game multiplayer fps game it's going to have extraction shooter stuff to it as well it's uh there's a lot of i think expectations coming out of this we've been following it for a few months now um and they are getting ready to start some alpha testing stuff so even the stuff you're seeing right now is is only alpha and it looks fairly decent so the hope here is that Delta Force Hawk Ops will continue to get and look better it's going to be free to play like i said so we'll probably try it out in here as a community whenever it does hit that, uh, you know, full release or, or even early access, whatever it's going to be. Tears of Metal looks very good. Check this out. This might be something we can do as a, uh, a community here, trying out some of this as it's going to be multiplayer. It's got like a multiplayer roguelike hack and slash vibe. So check this out. I love the art style. Love the bagpipes, you know. Tears of Metal. Looking pretty good. Um, Neon Blood. Looking pretty interesting as well. Axis Unseen's one that I'm I'm kind of on... Teetering on. I don't really know if I'm I'm digging that one. But Neon Blood we'll watch real quick and then we'll, we'll kind of sum up the new segment here, okay? So check this out. Peggy 16. some potential there man looks quite interesting so we'll see neon blood i'll link it for you guys if you're interested in this one too these are just some of the the more uh interesting games that i've seen so far in the showcases for myself and um i don't know maybe maybe worth a look for you guys as well all right but uh we'll continue to address these games as they come to us we've got more showcases today Coming our way, Xbox, Black Ops 6, and then PC Gaming Show. Cool. So that's what's on the agenda for the rest of our day. We're going to play some games coming up in just a moment. After we sum up the news segment, we got about three hours right now. Three hours till it'll be time to get ready for the Xbox Showcase. So we'll play some X Defiant with the community, have some fun, just playing some shooter stuff. And uh, 
then we'll get ready for watching showcases to end the day, okay? I hope everybody's having a banger weekend, dude. It's uh, It's been good for me so far, a big in part to you guys being here and hanging out and playing games and watching showcases with me and stuff. And uh, we'll keep it going, man. Keep the good vibes pushing, dude. So uh, thanks to everybody that's here and a part of what we do all the time. I really appreciate it. For anybody that's not familiar with how we, we uh, do our streams, man, it's six days a week, starting at roughly 6 a.m. CST CDT. That is 4 a.m. Pacific or 7 a.m. Eastern Time, beginning with video gaming news, trying to stay current on what's happening in the industry and uh, promote a healthier industry, a better place for all of us that are gaming enthusiasts and consumers of these products, man. After that, we move on. We play games like we're about to do right now. And, uh, you know, we just have a good time doing it. We've got an awesome community full of amazing people that are always cultivating an amazing experience, welcoming, inclusive, and, and just good vibes, man, about being here and enjoying the uh, world of video game entertainment that we all love so much. And it's about just uh, creating awesome friendships and, and uh, lifting each other up day in and day out. And if you can dig that, come be a part of it. We're always looking for more awesome people to grow this community in the right way, man. So... Um, other than that, I guess stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. I'm going to run us an outro real quick, but uh, we're not going anywhere. I will be right back up here as soon as the outro is over, and we will start getting ready for playing some X, De X Defiant before we uh, dive into all these showcases this afternoon, all right? You guys rock. Happy Sunday. I'll see you in a second.